I spend a lot of time talking about capturing photos, the gear you might want, the places to go, the techniques to use, and then talking about editing and printing so that you've got gorgeous prints for your home. But what about gorgeous prints for your clients? Let's talk about printing, printing in the field, at events, and being able to give your clients near instantaneous high quality prints. Here's your print, Elliot. Thank you. That'll be $200. $200? Mm-hmm. It's always fun to work with a neighbor's kid. In this video, I want to chat about dye sublimation printers. I've got two printers here, the DNP410 and the DS820A. But before we get to specifics, I want to talk a little bit about dye sublimation printers in general, some of my misconceptions and maybe yours surrounding dye sub printers. Dye sub printers use a ribbon with different color panels and a heating element to transfer these colors onto paper. This is process is fast, noticeably faster than most inkjets, and the quality is excellent. Now, you would think with fast speed, you're going to sacrifice some quality, but dye sub printers actually produce a higher quality picture than most inkjets and the print comes out dry, ready to hand off without worrying about smudging. Now, another benefit of dye sublimation is fewer moving parts, and that's part of where the speed comes from, but it also means that these printers are reliable, and this is key. You can move them without worrying about things getting out of alignment. That makes them the best choice for venue and event printing. Generally, that's not something that's very advisable with inkjet printers. Google how to move an inkjet printer, it's not pretty, and it's something you really only want to do when you are actually moving into a new house. But there are drawbacks to dye sub printers. First is the ribbon must match the size of the media that it's being printed on. So you always buy your paper and ribbon as a set, and you need to switch out the ribbon and the paper together if you're going to switch sizes. This does in some ways limit your print size range, but not as much as I thought it was going to. We'll talk more specifically about that in a minute. And if it's not clear from this big roll, you aren't feeding these any kind of printer paper. Dye sub only works with a specific dye sub paper that comes in a roll, generally. There are some that print on flat sheets. And if you're looking at this roll thinking, I need to invest in a paper cutter, I'm going to cut the ends of my fingers off, well, there's a paper cutter built in. You actually only need to do cutting if you're not using the full width of the paper. This little DNP410 up top here can print on 4x4s, 4.5x4.5s, 4x6s, and a 4.5x8. That all comes from the same roll. The 820 can print on 4x8 all the way up to 8x12 and can even create panoramic photos as big as 8x32. I'll talk more about that in a second. This is impressive. Now, that is possible only on Windows. Sadly, you don't have the pano option at this time on Mac. Now, the install in general for these on Mac and Windows, super easy. I put it on the driver on three different machines, installed it, connected, and it just worked. The panorama print I just mentioned does need a separate program from the driver. That is supported only on Windows. That's the catch there. Something I hope they fix sometime soon. Soon. Please, DNP, I like to use Macs. I want to print more of these gorgeous panoramas without having to dig out a Windows machine. Now, I mentioned the speed. The 410 can print a 4x6 in 19 seconds. The 820 can print in 20, an 8x10 in 29 seconds. And when it comes out, again, it's dry. It's ready to hand out. You don't have to worry about anybody smudging it. DNP also offers a model that can do 4x6s in just 9 seconds. It almost fires them out like a gun. That makes these printers great for photo booths. That's probably one of the most popular use for DNP printers. But there are a lot of photographers increasing their revenue by providing near instant prints at events, including live sport games, live sport games, I know what I'm talking about, team photos, dances, military balls, photos with Santa. They even have a template to set up for passport photos. And some of these printers allow for wireless printing or with a wireless module printing directly from mobile devices. That's one of the ways that you can set up a really nice easy photo booth with an iPad. That's very possible. Now I was under the impression that generally dye sub printers sacrificed some quality for the speed and reliability, but after a little research and printing a lot of my own prints, it's just not the case. These are gorgeous, and in fact, the method used makes them a better quality than many inkjet printers. 
this panorama that I shared a second ago. I happen to have in here a professional print from Bay Photo Lab, which is my photo lab of choice. It's on acrylic, so it's not directly comparable, but this looks fantastic and holds up very well to that professional print that cost me a lot more. And the fact that this came out in under, what, a minute and a half? That's impressive. I was also under the impression that the cost per print was higher than with a typical inkjet, but a little more research shows that's not true either. Let's compare against the popular Canon Pixma Pro 100. You have to factor in paper and ink, and we are comparing it to the DMPs when you do the same. 4x6 is about 26 cents, 5x7, 38 cents, 8x10, 87 and a half cents, and we move up to a 13x9, $2.70. Now you compare that to the 4x10, 4x6s, they're going to cost you about 20 cents a print. It does get more expensive with the larger prints and the metallic paper. An 8x10 from this 820 is going to cost you $1.82, but you can still see that's very competitive and that is on very high quality metallic paper, giving you a very high quality print. Maybe I should share the cost of these printers. The DNP 410 costs $4.29. The DS820A costs $10.49. Plus factor in buying a set of media. For the 820, that's another $170. So the upfront cost is definitely more expensive than your average inkjet. But if you plan to incorporate this into your business, you can make these profitable purchases very quickly. Now, there is some serious appeal in providing tangible prints in an increasingly digital world and being able to do so in near real time, and that can add up to some nice profits. I'll say this though, these aren't the printers for general at-home prints. I think inkjets are more versatile with easy switching of paper type and sizes, and they can handle everything from your kids' science graphs to nice photos. But I am happy to recommend these DMP die sub printers for photographers looking for good quality, immediate prints. And I'd love to know your creative ideas for incorporating die sub printers into your business. You can let me know in the comments below. I'll provide links to these along with the different media sets so you can get an idea of how it all works together. But that's all I got for you now. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you found this useful along with pressing that little bell for future videos and giving it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Here you go, Elliot. Cool, thanks. That'll be $200. $200? <laughs>